Hey there everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Daniel and in this one we are going to be looking at this time lapse I did of a lo-fi room. So just some context before we get into it. I've been painting these environment slices as a way just to practice lighting and painting props and drawing in perspective and that sort of thing. And last year somebody reached out to me over Instagram and commissioned me to paint their bedroom, which I thought was really cool because as soon as I got the reference photos and started looking at it, I realized this is really aesthetic first of all, and there's a lot of interesting things for me to paint. I just thought it would be a really fun project, so I said yes. And this is pretty much the process. I'm starting off with a very rough sketch that you can see underneath the lines I'm doing right now. And I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I like to start off this way just to get the general composition and make sure that all of the different props are to scale with each other and also just to lay everything out. Since this was a commission, I had to make sure the initial direction I was heading in was okay by the client and uh, I showed them a couple of sketches to begin with and they picked the angle that they really liked. So I went for this more sort of isometric view and that was really just to show off more of the room because they wanted their room to be painted. It was going to be the star in this case and this top-down view gives me a wide range of showing everything on the desk and on the walls and also keeping it within the frame itself because it was going to be used for an album cover later on. This painting process was actually really enjoyable because it was very straightforward. I just had to paint a room and for me it was really important capturing all of these little things that give the room so much character and it's something that I take from this project and actually employ into my later work because I realized there are so many small things within somebody's room that tell a story whether it's just a notepad sitting down on the desk or a couple of sticky notes on a monitor just the plants or the cards that are set up there and little inside jokes that you might not have noticed and it really brought to my attention these are the kinds of things I could be adding in my own art to make it feel like the places I was painting were lived in and real and believable. And as far as the actual commission process itself, they reached out to me over Instagram and I live in Australia and they were from America so there was going to be some kind of time zone delay. With that being said, we did have a brief window each day where for a couple of hours we could talk directly to each other and this is really just where I asked a lot of questions to make sure we were on the same page and basically just asking for a lot of reference photos as well for just small details within the room that uh, I wasn't sure about. And overall, this illustration took about eight hours, I think, over a day and a half or so. It was really, like I said, straightforward and enjoyable to work on. And you can see from the time lapse so far that after I finish the line art, I'll block in all of the basic colors and make sure that all of the shapes are where they should be. And once that's done, I will go in and start detailing all of it by just color blocking, really. And it was an interesting challenge thinking about how to reduce all of the different details from the reference image. But my biggest piece of advice would really just be zoom out as often as you can and take it all in at once. I think because of digital art, we get very caught up in detailing everything. But if you think about it, at a certain point in real life, when you have like say a sketchbook, for example, or a canvas, you can't physically zoom in that much. So some details will have to be lost. And this was a great thing for me to realize because I tend to over detail a lot. And when I realized, oh, I can actually just paint this one thing with two colors and it reads as a poster. It was very liberating. And I do that multiple times throughout the piece. Um, sometimes I will create a lot of the posters in an orthographic flat view, uh, like I'm doing right now. And once I'm finished with that, I will go ahead and warp it in perspective. And if you're actually curious about how I do this, I made another video where I talk about painting windows for buildings, but it's the same workflow and I'll link it right here. But yeah, since I've started taking commissions, I've felt very lucky actually, because a lot of the clients I've worked with have been very understanding and very open to change and suggestions. And at a certain point, it is also my job to flesh out their ideas a little bit if they're unsure about what they want and I think it's meeting in the middle ground that's the best place for both people to make sure that the project goes smoothly and that everything is uh, all good. I will also just add as far as money goes 
I think it's probably a wise idea to ask for 50% upfront and then 50% once it's done. That way I'm just sort of ensuring that we are both on the same kind of track. Uh, not to be dramatic, but I think about it sometimes as when you go down in movies and there's some kind of deal and the guy's like, slide over the briefcase, see? And the guy slides it over and the other guy's like, now you the money. It's that, it's that kind of thing. But it's just a way to ensure that I don't get burnt from any clients potentially. And again, luckily I haven't had any bad experiences with people so far, but usually it's standard practice to ask for 50% before you begin. And you can also send them a bunch of work in progress shots and just get their advice along the way just to make sure you're still in the right direction. It's all a balancing act though. So if it gets to a point where you're making constant changes towards the piece, you have to also just, I would recommend at the start when you're laying out the invoice is to just make sure that any further additions, say maybe like two or three major changes, of course, it really depends on you what you consider a major change, but it's just a way of making sure that your time is being looked after and everything that you put into the piece will be very transparent and you won't sign up for something that turns into a project that never really ends. And I think sometimes as artists, we can get a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of money just because we are directly placing value on our own work and sometimes that can be a little bit daunting, but especially at the end of the day, art is a trade. And if they've come to you, then you, dear artist, are somebody that's been working very hard and you spend a lot of time acquiring your skill set. So you should definitely be compensated for that sort of thing. Now, of course, the more you take commissions and the more you get used to dealing with clients and setting up invoices, the better you will be at asking for them because this side of art, the business side of things is a skill in and of itself. And it's really just about repetition, just as we do art studies, dealing with clients and having experience with people. And also just improving your communication is something that's really important for this kind of thing. And what I would consider my first proper art commission was back in university. I think I was like mid year or something like that. And a film director that was also working at the university uh, approached me and just asked for a couple of different concepts. Now the short film never actually ended up being made and I didn't have to sign any non-disclosure agreements or anything, but it was about aliens in the Australian outback and that was actually a really cool project to work on. But I just remember at the time I felt a lot of imposter syndrome and I think to some extent that feeling didn't really go away. Uh, until after I finished the project and was done with it. But as I was doing it, because somebody else wanted to use my skills to do something, it was a lot of internal battle going on really about, am I good enough for this? What am I doing here? And you know, the standard kind of things that happen with imposter syndrome. And anyway, let's get back to the time lapse. So right now I'm just finalizing everything. And I left the monitor and laptop white because I was waiting for images for the client to send over so I could Photoshop it in place, which you will see right here. Something I did want to show you was I sent this off to the client and they were really happy with it, but they also wanted a nighttime version of the scene. And although I had done all the painting beforehand, um, there are some tricks that we could use in Photoshop. And I just want to walk you through how I actually did that. Okay, so let's actually walk through how I made this daytime scene into nighttime. So first of all, I started by darkening the background and also painting out some of the leaves with a darker purple color. Secondly, what I did was created a new layer and I turned off the background and merged everything by pressing Control, Alt, Shift and E. So that was done. I created a solid color adjustment layer and I picked some kind of purple. I think it might have been a bit more desaturated. If you come up here into multiply and clip that, it already darkens everything relative to each other. So that's just this layer here. And next what I did was I created two passes of light, which was blue light and warm glow here. This is really just to have lighting coming in from the windows and also the monitor, as well as some of the lamps at the bottom on the desk. And this is by using masks. So using my original paint layer, uh, all I did was created different versions of it. If I just disable this mask, you can see it's like a lighter version of this. And 
for using this color information, I just created a layer mask and painted in where I wanted all the different lights to be. The same thing for this one as well. If I'd go ahead and disable this, it's just the daytime version. Um, but because we are applying it in a night context, we can have that warm glow show through. And once that was done, I also just added a bunch of extra details to make it work, as well as color balance to make everything feel a little bit warmer. And finally, just some post-processing techniques, which I also have another video at right here. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on another video. I hoped it was entertaining and somewhat helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or you can find me on Instagram at Daniel Ang Art and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe.